Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-29. Our last episode showed the party taking a serious beating at the hands of some undead and narrowly getting trapped in a room with a black pudding. As the group comes to the end of the line for the second floor, they prepare to charge into the last room, not knowing what to expect. We rejoin them as Fargus and Cabe charge into the room with weapons drawn. With the ranger and bard charging into the room, they crisscross their path, pressing their backs against each other. Lady Irena and Sister Elaine stood in the doorway with some prepared spells to assist in combat. Fargus held a flickering torch and was dismayed to find only an empty room with a broken window looking out over the courtyard. Well, uh, <clears throat> hmm, I just don't know, replied Fargus Stoutheart, as the room was clearly empty. They lowered their weapons and looked back at each other when a booming voice was heard outside. The roof! Get to the roof! exclaimed Zamora, who watched the ruins from the outside of the globe. Cabe sprinted to the open window and found a narrow ramp leading up to the ramparts above. Jumping through the broken portal, he quickly scaled the ramp, leaving Fargus struggling to get his large frame through the narrow opening with both ladies yelling at him to hurry. I'm stuck, he yelled back at the ladies who charged at him and slammed his body, popping him out of the open window and nearly flinging him 25 feet down into the courtyard. The ranger was just quick enough and tall enough to grab the ridge line of the roof and hang on as the ladies scurried past him and up the rampart with Cape. With sweat beating on his forehead, the large man pulled himself back into the window and made it up to the ramp to the ramparts. As Fargus lumbered up the rampart, he found Cabe, Lady Irena, and Sister Elaine engaged with a zombie-like creature with fiery eyes. The creature was swinging a strange weapon and had already slashed the forearms of the bard. As the ranger ran across the rampart, he witnessed Sister Elaine get slashed in the head and fall to the ground in a heap. With the foe off balance, the mage cast Chill Touch, but it seemed to have little effect on the ghastly creature. The ranger entered combat with horrific overhead slash that glanced off the creature's weapon, but carved into the arm holding it, slicing off several fingers. The opponent carried on, seemingly uninjured despite the loss of a hand that had bounced behind the party. Combat continued for several minutes with Cabe, Irena, and Fargus hacking away at their strong opponent bit by bit. Each had sustained injuries as the creature had regained its weapon. Behind the party, a weak and sickly Welby was crawling along the ramparts with blisters covering his face and arms. He tried valiantly to help his friends, but struggled to move further as the sickness was quickly overtaking him. As the fighting raged, the group's opponent began to swing wildly, but connected to the mage's shoulder, opening a large wound and smacking her into the bard who was in mid-stroke of his attack. The jostling caused him to miss his target, who then kicked the half-elf, sending him over the edge of the roof. Give me a hand, yelled Cabe as his grip began to loosen on the rampart, but Lady Irena discovered her foot was trapped in the damaged floor and could not reach him. As she watched helplessly, she observed one of the creature's fingers roll across the rampart, adorned with a ring. Cabe lost his grip as the finger rolled into him and yelled as he went over the side. The kick against the bard caused the revenant to become unstable, and Fargus swung his blade horizontally, quickly slicing the creature's head from the body. The skull bounced over the side where Cabe had gone, and the body turned to dust, leaving only the strange weapon behind. Lady Irena finally ripped herself free and moved to the edge of the rampart, expecting to see the splattered remains of the bard in the courtyard below. As she reached the precipice, along with Fargus, they both peered over the side. 
Shock covered their faces as they found Cabe slowly floating down the distance with a grip on the ringed finger that Welby had tossed to him. Both exhaled as a broad smile crossed the bard's face. Fargus turned to thank Welby, who was again unconscious, as Lady Irena tended to Sister Elaine, who was lying in a pool of her own blood. The mage fumbled through her belongings and retrieved a healing potion and swiftly gave it to the cleric. The forehead gash began to dissolve and the wound closed nicely as Sister Elaine feebly gave her thanks to her associate. A bright light filled the sky and the party observed a slender shadow descending from the sky. The familiar voice of Zamora boomed out, Put the ring in the basket! As the shadow came into view, the group noticed that it was a very slender chain with a basket on the end, which landed in the center of the courtyard. Cabe looked up at his associates who nodded in agreement. The bard crossed the open courtyard, pulled the ring off the severed finger, and placed it in the silver basket. The chain began to slowly rise and quickly slipped out of the globe. Minutes seemed like hours, and no voice came from above. Hey! Hey! You promised to get us out! yelled Cabe from the courtyard. He was joined by Fargus holding a blistered halfling hand and Lady Arena assisting a still groggy cleric. Well? asked the ranger, but shook his head dejectedly. Anger boiled over as the ranger examined the injured group and his rage took over. By Dilo, you will let us out of here, you bitch, or I will adorn my home with your head, he yelled. A deafening silence fell over the courtyard of Fitz Keep until tremors began to shake the ground. Stones fell from the tops of the ruins, but the party was safe from them in the center of the falling debris in the courtyard. As the quake continued, a large rift began to open in the courtyard on both ends. The ground tore apart quickly, and the group was not fast enough to escape it. Each fell into the dark gap with their arms flailing and yelling. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.